Well, you know, we, we can never go through enough of these, but uh, we've run, running out of time. So let's, uh, let's get to know you a little bit. So I'm always fascinated by how these Amazonians go through life in terms of changing careers. So tell us, uh, tell us, take us back to the beginning. Where did you grow up? And uh, share with us some of your early life experiences that turned you into this Mr. Fix-It. This, was, this wasn't on the intake, Nick, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back to my, my childhood. Uh, well, everything comes from there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it all starts there. Oh man. Um, well, yeah. So you know, we talk about Mister Fix It, right? Um, I guess you know, growing up uh, in Tucson, Arizona, I, I grew up with my grandfather, mom, and a brother. And so, uh, my grandfather worked in construction, so he knew how to. He, you know, he practically built the house. Um, and so he was very uh, capable in construction. And I had a very close relationship with him. So the house is rather old um, by the time I came into the world. And as I grew up, I learned a lot about repair to the house as we had to maintain it. So I just grew, I, I don't know if that coalesced into my desire to troubleshoot, figure out things when it's come to my career. Um, I've, I've worked at a few different institutions like Intuit, uh, Amazon. And so a lot of the time I was involved with projects and looking to improve those processes because, you know, a lot of things, as you know, don't operate as efficiently as they should. So, you know, I guess I always had an interest in trying to fix the problems that were present. In, in but, you know, you know, yeah. what's interesting to me is, first of all, I mean, these companies, Amazon, we know it's a different culture, but companies like Intuit, so you worked in large companies. In large mm -hmm. companies, they don't let you do anything, right? Yeah. You, you get pigeonholed into something. How How is it that they let you, you know, because there's no diploma or certificate or training for fixing things, right? So how how, how did they let you... Uh, make changes and fix things so you you must have developed some kind of trust uh, sure. or how did that happen i don't know uh what's what's the saying where a uh, you do now and ask for forgiveness later or something oh yeah, yeah. You know what, I mean? what, what what is better ask for permission or ask for forgiveness yeah yeah, yeah that 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 so i've i'm usually just doing the the thing and then hoping that the outcome was <laughs> successful. Nonetheless, um, yeah, pigeonholed, uh, I think, is a, a huge thing. And that's why working in a smaller company has been refreshing because you have a lot more flexibility and freedom to, to make changes or at least act like a human, be a human, where you're kind of more of a cog in a greater system at some of these larger companies. Uh, I think, you know... Um, if I relate back to the Amazon principles, right? Earning the trust of your leadership, um, presenting solutions, um, you know, uh, one of them is like being right a lot. So, you know, as you've identified problems over and over again, that's going to allow you a little bit more flexibility into trying to fix issues uh, on your own or uh, gaining a little bit more autonomy. Um, so, and I think um, Amazon has a very, uh, actually, you know, a pretty uh, methodical approach to process improvements and fixing things or or developing new systems with, via their, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's like starting with a one pager where you outline your plan of action, like the problem, you know, what the current state is what the proposed future state looks like. And you you start with the draft, it's one page, put it on paper, and then you get your team together to, to critique that paper, and then it grows into three pages, and then it grows into seven pages. So um, I, I think, you know, obviously Amazon's pretty successful. So um, 
I, I, I when I think back about working at Amazon, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Um, I got to travel, got to train worldwide uh, seller support agents. Uh, amazing opportunity to meet people, so many people, right? But you know, it being very, uh, God, I don't know, I don't know the word, strict, um, cruel, <laughs> inhumane. <laughs> no, uh, just a very tough place to uh, to work at. The the standards are pretty high, and if you don't meet those standards, then there's a problem. Um, and you've seen stories in the news of, of folks, you know, that have had uh, a lot of stress, PTSD working there, man. It, it's, it, it's a good place to work though. I mean, if, if you are looking for experience, you just have to navigate the waters, uh, accordingly. Um, but yeah, it can be very stressful and you're always, you know, they say raise the bar over there. So right, right. Yeah, you, know, you gotta raise the bar. I rose the bar, right? The bar doesn't get much higher. Like how much more do you wanna go? But that's capitalism, right? So um y'all and nothing is ever like quite good enough, I would say, right? So, you know, it's a tough culture to survive in. And you work a lot of hours in your the more you do, the more responsibilities you take on. So uh, it can be a very stressful environment, but again, I had some really, really great experiences working there. So, and now here I am on the other side, the light, the, not the dark side, the, the light side. <laughs> well, you know, what, what happens is uh, when people are suffering through uh, a job, uh, an assignment or, or a mission, you know, if you are in the military, whatever, the, all those experiences, throughout those experiences, at the time you're doing it, you're complaining all the time. Oh, yeah. But after the fact, you always talk about those experiences with pride. So yeah. you, you yeah. wear it as a badge of honor. So, you, you know, it's a, nobody, nobody <clears throat> talks badly after the fact. But at the time, it's hell and you're going through hell. And so I guess the only thing that you can do is, as Churchill said, you know, you know the saying? So if you think you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, those are good words uh, to live by. Ultimately pull through. So I guess your grandfather did a great job on you. I mean, putting you in construction and then having you, uh, uh, mentoring you is, uh, is, yeah. is what gave you the foundation of figuring out what to do and then and becoming a solution person, right? Yeah, who knows? Man? Maybe maybe it all started there. You know, very very enlightening. Uh, yeah, so. listen, it it all <laughs> they, they 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 have. You know, I'm I'm not the expert at this, but I'm always into it. Uh, I have discussions and yeah, yeah. Uh, read and watch documentaries about the formation of the brain, mm -hmm. uh, and it's always zero to five years. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I maybe maybe so, but yeah. I mean that. So it's been a passion of mine. I left Amazon and I, I just worked on my own and did handyman work for a few years and then got back in the game. So now I'm trying to help sellers, you know, I'm on, on my, my own accord and uh, with the knowledge I've gained and knowing the way that Amazon operates and just keeping on top of, you know, the programs that are available. And, you know, I always recommend check out the news section. I don't know if people, read that news section in Seller Central, but always, always good to look there um, yeah. to try to keep on top of things. Cause they're always releasing something, you know, every day it's something yeah, new. Exactly.